Hey everyone, welcome back to this week's edition of the Maconi Setup Shop Apex Tutorials. Uh, this week we're looking at one of my favorite places to race at, the Auto Club Speedway, so strap in and let's get to it. Uh, as always with every video that I do, uh, this run was done in fifth gear. I would There was no shifting throughout the run. Uh, with this race being during the day and it being really warm and the track temps being as high as they're projected to be, I don't see a reason at any point in the run that you would want to downshift um, unless the fall off is incredibly big in traffic over the course of a run. You might want to downshift into the corner, but it gets really, really sketchy coming off because of the gearing. But I feel like if the pace slows down enough, it might be an option to consider. Uh, but with this being a really hot racetrack, I don't think that you're going to want to shift at all. So this whole run was done in fifth gear, and I think that it'll stay that way. Um, something we haven't talked about much uh, is qualifying because there hasn't been much difference between qualifying and race lines. Uh, this lap right here, this lap two, if you are one of the ones that really want to see a qualifying lap, watch this lap over. Um, the line in one and two, about a lane off the wall, there's a lot of grip. You carry a ton of momentum down the back straightaway, and then you just want to hit three and four as good as you can. And we're going to get into the techniques here. Um, big arcs. Uh, this was one of the original places where I learned the arc and park uh, way back when. And it still holds true today. Uh, turn three is an incredibly wide arc. It feels very, very wide. It feels incredibly exaggerated. And it needs to be. Okay, You don't want to be diving for the white line. You're trying to hit the apex about as dead center in the corner as possible you're going to have very little wheel input if you do it right. You're going to come off low and you're going to come off straight. Okay. That's a huge thing that I learned racing here years and years and years ago. Uh, once I learned how to get through turn three, I, I found a lot of success at this place and I've had a lot of really good races here and a lot of competitive fields. Um, and it's the same, the same technique holds true today. When we had dynamic track, it was a lot easier to move around. This to me is as close to dynamic track as we've ever had, at least here, uh, with the grooves that you can race on. I will get into running different lanes here throughout the video, but for turn three, it's almost like you're trying to fall off the safer barrier, and you're making that arc as wide as possible. And if anybody wants to dive underneath you and really shallow their entry, you're laughing. Worst case, you run the second lane, and you're going to put about six car lengths on them by the time you even get to the start-finish line. Okay? Turn one is very similar. You need to find your lifting point. It took me a little bit to find my lifting point. I was trying to drive into the two, the two marker. I realized that I needed to lift back by the traffic light going into turn one. Um, the way to get through turn one on the bottom, just like turn three, you need that wide arc and you want to get to the, the white line if you're going to run the bottom. If you get stuck in between lanes running the bottom in one and two, you're never going to get off the corner really. You're going to be down so much momentum, and it just makes a straightaway seem incredibly long. So you really want to try to get that arc kind of like three. Not as exaggerated, I don't think. At least I don't feel like it's as exaggerated. But you really need to make it a point to get to the white line. There's a noticeable amount of grip down there, and it really helps to drive off. When it comes to running the top, you can run right up against the wall. I don't think it's any better than running a lane down in terms of speed, but you can do it. Um, I've always found that at least one lane off the wall, there's just a good solid amount of grip. I don't think there's much difference in grip level between a lane down and the wall. So really, if you're running the wall, unless it's really late in the run or you're trying to defend, you obviously don't want somebody to get to your outside, especially here because the pass is pretty much guaranteed once they get to your outside so if it's a tight race you're going to run the wall so that you don't let somebody get to your outside right because it's really hard to make a pass on the bottom making passes here i've always found that setting them up for turn three is the best place to make a pass if you can get that good run off of two and get alongside them on the back straightaway as long as you can hit that arc there's plenty of speed down on the bottom of three you're gonna get far enough ahead to clear on the exit of four they will have a run coming off of four 
but even if they go to your inside you're going to have the preferred lane going into turn one anyway because you're going to be on the top even if they have to run the bottom and try to do a slide job you're going to have more than enough momentum to run the top cross over and be clear long before you get to turn three okay um another thing too with traffic kind of like kansas i feel like we talked about it at kansas this is another racetrack where you really want to try to keep clean air on the nose early run if you're running the top be mindful that you are going to wear your tire significantly more it's better to run the bottom as long as you can on fresh tires when everybody's close to the same speed and as long as you take care of your tires you can still make the bottom work the top is going to have speed especially off of two the the difference in straightaway speed down the back straightaway is very noticeable um so at some point you are going to have to move up but i suggest that you run the bottom as long as you can to take care of your tires so that when you do have to move up you've got a good tire advantage you don't necessarily have to push as hard and you can still defend and run a pace that's comfortable um again a lot of the race situation stuff is more to be determined in the race i know this is more of a video on how to get around the racetrack um, so again turn one if you're going to run the bottom really want to lift around the traffic light if the speeds are greater in the draft or dirty air is affecting you you need to back your corner up accordingly make sure you get that nice arc so you can carry that corner speed nice and smooth on the accelerator and try to get to that white line okay same thing in turn three you're going right to that safer barrier where it pokes out from the cement wall right here and you're just falling off the safer barrier and getting down to the white line okay i got into the throttle a little early here got a little loose that's okay there's plenty of laps to show you how it's done and then when it comes to running the top as we're going to go into the in car okay the top you can drive it in a little bit deeper because of the extra grip up there you're not putting anywhere near as much wheel into the race car um, see how much deeper we're able to drive it into turn one here right a lot less wheel input this is where you're going to take care of your front tires but by doing so you're going to heat up the rear tires because you can get into the gas so much harder and so much sooner than you can run in the bottom right that's where you kind of wear your tires out by running the top same thing in turn three you can drive it in deeper and straighter there's a lot of grip up here three is unique because the bottom has a lot of grip so you can make a pass and theoretically clear yourself entry to center you should have enough room to come up on exit but the run from the top is so big that they're gonna tick typically they're going to get alongside of you unless they just fall in line and push you because they realize you're faster but then you have the preferred line up here in turn one right and even if they do slide up and clear you'll have enough momentum to drive right back around them uh, going into turn three uh, so these in-car cameras here are a mix of every line that i think you would use in the race top 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 bottom and then bottom bottom uh, so for lap 10 here, we will go quiet and let you guys get a, a quiet lap run on the bottom in the in-car. Okay, guys, one quick thing to re remind you guys on when it comes to running the bottom, you have to be a lot more patient with your inputs because you've got a lot more wheel input. It's a tighter radius. You're not going to carry the same amount of speed as opposed to running the top and running the top. You're going to have a lot less wheel input, so You can be more aggressive with the throttle because the wheel's going to be straighter. You're not going to have a lot of wheel input, get into the gas a lot and then make the car loose. Uh, so again, it's a feel thing. It's something to keep in mind. And please, the biggest thing that I can recommend is commit to a lane before you get to the corner, right? If you're going to run bottom, commit to the bottom. 
If you're going to run top, commit to the top. If you're going to run middle, you have to commit to it. If you're trying to change lanes or you want to enter middle and they go, oh, I really want to go low, you're going to find yourself in a very bad situation around this place. Okay, Commit to it. Back your corners up. Make sure you get to the line. Make sure you hit the line that you want to run, and you'll be just fine. Again, for qualifying, uh, your money lap, top one and two, about a lane off the wall. You're going to have a ton of speed going down the back straightaway bottom and three and four the top and three and four is good but you don't have enough time to make up the time given up entry to center uh, before you get back to the start finish line you notice when you run the top that you can be like a whole tenth up going into one you just don't make that time up by the time you get to the start finish line so top one and two bottom three and four get yourself a good money lap okay guys that'll do it for this week's video uh, as always if there's any questions, comments, concerns, something I didn't touch on that you want clarification on or anything like that, please leave a comment down below and I will do my best to get to them throughout the week. If you find that these videos are helpful, please consider leaving a like. And as always, if you're not already subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can see these videos every Monday when they're posted to the YouTube page. All right, guys, best of luck this week and we'll see it on the track.